A quick story for you. Warm Audio actually sent me this WA44 ribbon mic quite a few weeks ago. And well, I stuffed up. I took way too long to get to it. And by the time I had, a whole bunch of really talented YouTubers had made excellent videos about it. And unsurprisingly, they tended to focus on its vintage heritage because this microphone is closely modeled on the classic RCA44 type microphones from the 30s and 40s. But my delay got me thinking, could I get the best of both worlds? Can I get the very natural and warm tone, which is associated with ribbon microphones, but get a more modern flavor with it that we normally associate with condenser microphones? That's what I tried. Did I succeed? Well, you be the judge. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Now, in order for you to decide whether I reached my goal or not, I'm going to play the whole song towards the end of this video so you can really hear it in context and come to your conclusions. But as a summary, I used it on four main sources, two vocals and two guitars. Now with one of those guitars, I use the very standard practice of pointing it roughly at the 12th fret or so. With the other one, I use the mid side technique, which we will discuss later on. But it was really with the vocals where I wanted to get that modern sound, particularly with the lead female vocal, but also with the male backing vocal as well. Now in all cases, I used my WA MPX mic preamp. Why? Because ribbon mics in general need a little bit of extra gain. That's got lots of extra gain. But if you want to use this with your audio interface to get a really clean sound, then I'd highly recommend that you check out the Warm Lifter. This will give you a nice clean gain boost before you go into the mic preamps on your interface. Now, before we really take a look at that vocal, let's just take a quick look at that mid-side technique I used on the guitar. So the mid-side technique here takes advantage of the fact that the WA-44 has a tight figure of eight pattern, meaning it picks up sound from the front and the back and rejects sound from the sides really well. But we're actually gonna start off by putting the WA-44 side onto the guitar. So one side of it is picking up the neck of the guitar and the other side is picking up the body. Then we're gonna introduce a second microphone. It could be any microphone here that has a cardioid pattern, meaning it's gonna pick up sound from one side and we're gonna direct that microphone at the guitar. Now in this case, I've used the WA CX12, but you really could use any microphone with this pattern. The magic happens in the door. So let's take a look at that now. Let's start off by listening to the mic that was pointed directly at the guitar. It's in purple and it sounds like this. So a perfectly fine, but very mono sounding guitar there. Now let's have a listen to the WA44. It's in blue here. And I just want to warn you, things are going to sound kind of worse before they get better here. Have a listen. So it's very natural sounding, but it's very dark. It certainly picks up the low frequencies really well, but it doesn't boost the high frequencies like a condenser does at all. But I'm not here to just EQ the WA-44 because with mid-side recording, we have a different purpose. What I'm gonna do now is actually duplicate that track completely. So we've got two identical tracks now of the WA-44 recording, and I'm going to reverse the polarity of the second one. I'm doing that by clicking on this polarity switch here. Now let's have a listen to the result. Oh we've got complete silence. But the meters are moving, so there's some activity here, but we can't hear anything. And that's because we reversed the polarity of one of these, so they're cancelling each other out. We literally took the waveform and we flipped it upside down. So whereas it was going up above zero before, it's now going below zero and vice versa. And when we do that with two identical sources, we hear nothing. So in order to hear something, what I'm gonna do now is take the first of these and pan it completely to the left and I'm going to take the second one and pan it all the way over to the right. Let's have a listen to what we've got now.
Okay, still a fairly dark sounding guitar, but there's a difference happening. Let me demonstrate that in a moment. But what I'm going to do is just take those uh, two guitars there and I'm just going to turn them down a little bit so I can blend them in with the original guitar. Let's have a listen to the result now. So a much more even overall frequency response, but did you hear we're getting a kind of a nice stereo type effect? Don't believe me? I'm going to go over to the master bus now and I'm going to switch between stereo and mono. Listen to the difference when I go over to mono. And that's the effect I wanted to get because at the beginning of this song, it's just the guitar and the vocal. And whenever I'm in that situation, I really like to kind of spread the guitar out. However, if somebody's listening to this in mono, they're going to get true mono because those two guitars are actually going to cancel each other out. And we're just going to hear the one microphone that was pointing at the guitar. Now, I did record some other guitars. As I mentioned at the beginning, I used the traditional method of pointing the WA-44 at the 12th fret of a guitar, and I did that twice, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. Let me reveal those guitars now. They're in green here, and they come in in the second verse. So finally, when I combine all of these guitars together, I get this sound. And that's just what I was looking for, a fairly natural sound, but nice and kind of spacious at the same time as well. I didn't do any EQing here as such, but I will be using a lot of EQ for the vocal. So now we come to the heart of the matter, the vocal. I'm going to show you in a moment exactly what I did to it, but first I want to give you a before and after so you can see where we're heading with this. But I do caution, you still need to listen to it in the context of the mix later on to make a final judgment. So let's hear the vocal as it was sung through the microphone with absolutely nothing done to it. Was it the fear of my time? Was I too near you too much too soon? And here it is after I processed it. Was it the fear of my touch? Was I too near you too much too soon? So you've heard the before and after, but how did I achieve the after? Well, basically with EQ and compression, but not just one EQ and one compression plugin, but five all together. Let's go through each of them and I'll try to explain some rationale, although it's not always there, as to why I used each plugin. The first one is kind of a secret weapon of mine, the fast equalizer from Focusrite. You don't have to use this to get these results, but I like the fact it's got some AI which listens to your track first and comes up with a basic setting and here it basically cut the low end frequencies out of this signal for me I could have done that myself but that's what it suggested and I like this plugin because you can do broad strokes just using this kind of body nasal presence and sibilance um, controls here you can use it as a detailed eq as well but it's nice as a starting point for taking kind of broad strokes if you like okay so that's the first plugin i use before i went into compression i like to tidy eq up a little bit before using compression the first compressor i used was an 1176 this will be no surprise to many of you who watch my channel regularly the point of this compressor was just to deal with any sharp transients, okay? So to balance things out a little bit before I go into my second compressor. My second 
one is an LA2A. This is a much more gentle compressor and sort of deals much more with the whole signal. Okay, so it's very typical that I use those one after the other in that way. Now, the next plugin doesn't necessarily make a whole load of sense. Um, it's a preamp plugin from Arturia. I quite often use this to boost some high frequencies. Now, you'd think, well, you could just use a regular EQ plugin for that, couldn't you? And you're right, I could have just boosted um, 15K in the EQ plugin. But I get something from this plugin which I can't quite put my finger on, and it doesn't make any logical sense, but that's what I do. But its main purpose was to give me a little bit of a high frequency boost here. But a lot of the main work was done in my final plugin, which was Fab Filters Pro Q3. Even though I'd done a cut earlier on before compression, I still wanted to kind of smooth things out on that low end. And I went for quite a drastic curve here, okay? Um, it starts around about 200 hertz or so. It's a 6 dB slope. It's a very gentle slope here. And I wanted to gently suppress the low end frequencies without sort of obliterating them completely. I want them to be there, but in the context of a song with other instruments which are using that frequency space, I didn't feel that they were necessary. Now, this weird EQ setting, which I very rarely use, I guess, um, but it just sounded right to me at the time, um, is at the top here. Let's take this one out first of all. So I'll just switch this one off. You can see that basically I did quite an aggressive high shelf here, way up above sort of 10 kilohertz, all right? So that adds a lot of air to the sound, but I still felt it needed an, an extra little boost um, at around about 13K, which is why I've got this little boost here, which you can see. It may not make a whole lot of sense, but it sounded good to me ultimately. So the important thing I think to remember here though, is that all of this should be done in context with the actual mix. And also particularly where the compression is concerned, at this stage, the beginning of the song, we're really just kind of tickling the compressors but you really hear them kick in later on in the song. The second half of the song gets much more full and loud. And that's why I recommend you do listen to the song all the way through. So I pretty much use the same technique for the male vocal as the female vocal. And now it's time to listen to those results in context. But quickly before we do, if you're releasing your music to major platforms like Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, etc., don't forget to check out the link in the description down down below to our sponsor DistroKid. If you follow that link, you can get 7% off of your first year of membership. Let's listen to the song. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? that kept you running Was it the fear of my touch Was I too near you too much too soon that kept you running Just go Was it the moment we shared? Was it the way that I dared to love? That kept you running Was I too early to need to know? It kept you running. Oh, 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 oh. 
just go So what do you think? Did I transform this from a vintage to a modern yet natural sounding microphone? Let me know in the comments down below or I'll be pleased to read both your praise and your constructive criticism. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Mike and I hope you're well.